All right, let's um, let's call the regular meeting of the Niles Public Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, September 21st, 2016. Um, Dan, please take the roll. Uh, Rob? Here. Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Rob? Here. Okay, it must be running late. Linda gave previous notice. Ted? Here. All right, let's all uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good we'll to see you all on the I guess, last day of summer. So, all right. Um, first thing that we have on our agenda is a discussion, and I, I know this. I think what we're going to be doing this evening is just having a discussion. Um, this uh, is a meeting where so far Hetty isn't here and, and Linda isn't here, so I think it'd be good for us all to be here to vote on this, but I think it's worth discussing, and that is the order in which, which we uh, will vote in the future. And uh, Barbara, you brought up this matter, I believe, and um, would, you, would you explain how you've seen sure. voting done elsewhere? Yeah, you know when um, when we were when we were at the last meeting, um, and I, I teased Rob that oh he's got he's always got to go first and that's a lot of pressure you know and then when I, I went home and I thought well, wait a minute you know at the zoning board the way we do it is whoever makes the motion votes first and then it, it proceeds around the table you know to the left and that makes more sense to me because then the same person doesn't always have to vote first. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I, I would like to suggest that we adopt a policy here, a procedure here too. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go alphabetically, it just goes around the table. Susan That's and fine. I were at the mm -hmm. um, training session on Saturday at the Ella Library about Robert's rules and just rules in general for board uh, proceedings. That's actually one of the things that they do. Oh. It's kind of like, that's supposed, it's not supposed to happen. You mean the way Barbara just described? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the person who makes the motion. Is that, am I wrong on that? I think no, that's what yeah, I said, yeah, right? yeah. yeah, the person who makes the motion is the person who does Well, the I think it said that the person who makes the motion is the, is the person who's supposed to speak to it first, is what I remember, but that the order of the votes is unspecified. Oh. A lot of places don't do a roll call vote, they just do everybody saying at once, you know, I or they. So, um, yeah, but, but there is a, a, no rule for how that part is done that, that you guys can just do whatever you are we sure that there isn't a reason why I noticed in some of the documentation, especially the appropriation, the budget appropriation that you just filed, they actually ask for the order of A's and A's. So I would think there are you some... You mean the number of A's and I's and A's? No, actually, who? Okay, but... So I'm thinking maybe there may be reasons why we do need not to vote as a majority and we would need to specify our vote. Oh, I'm just oh, saying, so, yeah, okay. so, you, so you, you don't, uh, yeah. have any, you're not saying it doesn't it matter what order you vote in, but. Well, I had you, a question about that too. Is there is there a reason why we vote in alphabetical order? I think it's just, uh, it's just, it's just not the way any, it's, it's, Yeah, it's always been okay. Then I have another question, because you're better versed at Robert's Rules. When it comes to voting, isn't it true that if you are not prepared to vote, that they can pass you, and that you can vote later i mean within the time frame of the vote but you don't need to be the first person you don't need to vote when you're when it's your turn there's a couple positions you could take and i i you could abstain my graphics rules yeah you certainly could abstain uh but that normally doesn't mean they come back to you i believe later. i saw i don't know actually, i'd have to look that up I okay because i actually saw it in a meeting before i became a trustee mm -hmm. and i think it was dennis o'donovan who was not prepared there was a lot of pressure and he was not prepared to vote. So they passed him, and then everyone voted, and then they went back to him. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just wondering, and I, and I totally understand being new and being first, that's really uncomfortable. Um, well, but I, I'm not saying just Robert, I mean, if it was anybody, yeah. shouldn't he have to go first all the time? 
you know. Just because he's a new kid on the block, that's why I was teasing him, but nobody should have to go first all the time. But I'm thinking it's just procedural. I'm sure it's, well, we can change yeah, the procedure can. to make more sense. Well, we do. I just want to make sure it's something we can change and that we change and that we do follow protocol for a particular vote. Yeah. So you know, we need to check that I, I did. I have looked this up. But, um, it's in your bylaws that all votes are to be taken by eyes and nays. And recorded by the secretary, and I did not. That sounded very vague to me. But then when I looked it up in Roberts, that does mean that in your bylaws you have a roll call vote for everything. And Roberts actually says they don't. They think that's a waste of time. They don't think that's a good they plan. A waste but of time. They did at first for um, yeah. For under Roberts, you vote um, have a roll call vote on anything to do with money, and everything else can just be everyone in favor. But you guys have it in your bylaws that you want a roll call vote. So you have to do that. The only question is what order you do the roll call in. And you can you can make that up yourself. So can you ask about that? If it would be okay to change the, the procedure to well, I can't ask that, but it, I mean, it's it's. We don't bylaws. really have any written procedure. Even as yeah, it, it, is. it is up to you. It's oh, it just okay. yeah, you don't have it. All right. Which actually brings up another topic related to this. We don't have a, a set of procedures. For this board. Oh, sure we do. In the policy we know. Then. Don't we? Well, what? what I, I don't know what kind of procedures well, I don't know they're they, thinking of exactly. They so. said that the, the bylaws were, they had the hierarchy of what goes, and the, the Roberts rules is on the bottom, and the library procedures is above that, and then bylaws were above that. So they, yeah. many libraries have a separate mm -hmm. document that's procedures for board. We have yeah. procedures for mm -hmm. the library. We have, right. We have uh, policy and procedures. Right. We do have bylaws, and we'll, there's procedures for the board. I'm not sure okay. if the procedures books has a lot of sections that deal with the board, though. Well, okay, so we, it's really policy manual. We actually try to keep procedures out of the policy manual because uh -huh. those, are, you know, should be flexible, generally speaking. But I'm not. What would you like to see in a procedures, a board procedures document? Well, things of uh, right here in this voting order. Uh, which ones would you vote in uh, in group? Which ones would you do a, 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 a individual vote in? Um, the, the amount of time that we discuss an issue, the order that we discuss an issue, things that we we really don't have um, anything written down. We seem to just have things that we do that we've always done, but it doesn't seem to be documented anywhere. But it's just an observation. I mean, maybe we have it needed, maybe we don't need it. Well, if you think of something, why don't you make a list and then present it and go from there? Yeah, I mean, I think every board can make up their own, you know, sort of agreements about behavior around the board and things like that. There, there, there are the bylaws, and that, you know, those you can't change right. widely. And then the roll call vote is part of the bylaws. But, um, but yeah, you have you could certainly make up your rules for how you want to run a meeting. Though generally, it's kind of in the hands of the president to make those decisions. So, but you could spell that out. I mean, it's up to you guys. Um, okay, so as I said, I thought we would just discuss it tonight. And um, if anyone wants to make a motion at the next meeting uh, regarding this, we can do that then. That's okay. All right, so the next item on the agenda. Pardon? We're going to stick with traditions. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting August 17, 2016. Uh, do I have a motion? No. Second. Right, so second. Great. All right. Any uh, discussion of the minutes or any corrections? Um, just in terms of minutes, uh, again, I know a couple of you went to this um, parliamentary procedure. Um, conference or seminar on Saturday, was there anything regarding minutes that, that was discussed at that session? Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, they had a discussion again on the minutes of it. And in Robert's rules, when it comes to minutes of a meeting of this nature, all you really need to report is what happened, not necessarily what was said. And you don't even really need to discuss the reports. You know, you, a, a building report. You can you can submit a building report in writing, and we can beforehand, and we can.
can just say it was accepted. We don't even have to read it or discuss it or anything. The board can just say it's accepted and it's accepted into the minutes. So some of these boards have an extremely small uh, uh, minutes uh, because it, it, it really gets down to uh, we voted on an issue and this is what we said. So this is what was decided. Really it can be very streamed. Mm -hmm. So um, there is that. There's no, um, <clears throat> again, again, we don't have procedures. <laughs> so we don't have anything written down as to how we want our minutes to look or you know anything anything concrete. But uh, they did say that minutes technically only needed to be of what was actually done at the meeting. Yeah, it's just the phrase that you do you put in the minutes. Not you do not put in the minutes what was said. You only put in the minutes what was done. Right. Okay. The final action. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, but I guess we do need a roll call on these sure. minutes, the approval of the August 17th minutes. Anyone have a roll call? Okay. Uh, Rob? Yes. Well, who made the motion to uh, approve it? We're, 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 we're still doing the alphabetical. But, but I, I don't know if you got that down. Did you get that down? Uh, who made the motion? No, I think I did. And I seconded it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, because I was right. Okay, so we're not doing the new. No, nope, not yet. Not yet. Okay, Rob. Not yet. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Patty. Yes. Ted. Yes. All right. Has anyone registered for public comment? Um, here, so okay. All right, then we'll move on to uh, Treasurer's report, and I understand from your comments that we could just receive a report, but I'm going to turn to Greg and ask you to just sort of quickly walk through it anyway, because I'd hate to have a minute meeting that was too short. Yeah. I would too. Okay, so it's the second month of the fiscal year. Uh, revenues are uh, above budget expectations at $527,000. Uh, salaries are uh, about seven thousand dollars short of budget estimates, or uh, thirteen thousand for the year. Library materials on the month is uh, about six thousand under budget, but twenty-three thousand eight thirty-five over budget for the year, uh, due primarily to annual subscriptions and a lot of things that we're buying and um, offset uh, or uh, advanced buying of adult DVDs and adult books. Library operating expenses are uh, $4,000 under budget and uh, $18,000 uh, for the year, and that's uh, due to slow spending in software and uh, capita uh, line items. Uh, general administrative expenses are $3,500 under budget uh, and uh, almost $12,000 year to date uh, due to slow spending on a consultant line item. Employee fringe benefits, $6,000 under budget, and uh, 9,000 year to date. Uh, these numbers reflect the charges from IMRF for the month. These, I, yeah, that's one I wanted to point out here. These charges, or numbers, reflect the charges for IMRF for the month of August, which totaled the library share, totaled uh, 18,645. Um, if we annualize, if we annualize the numbers, we should be right at about uh, 225,000 dollars uh, for retirement. Utilities, uh, my end is uh, within uh, a thousand, within a thousand dollars on budget expense, both monthly and year to date. Net surplus uh, for the month is uh, one million six twenty, which is uh, five hundred six seventy three favorable to the budgeted net surplus of a million fifty six, and four hundred ninety thousand favorable for twenty four point five percent year to date. So, any questions? Any questions for Greg? Uh, the audit's going to uh, start next Monday. So we should have uh, McClure and Sarah in, in the offices on uh, Monday and Tuesday. And uh, I believe they're tentatively on the November schedule for presentation. That's in November. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Similar yeah. to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it, you know, they have to file a report uh, by the end of December. They usually uh, file it early December, but that means it has to be approved in November, I think. Okay, thanks, Greg. Can I 
just ask a question, sort of relative to the, um, your report? I was looking at the year and income statement in June, and if I read it correctly, we ended the year with six hundred and over six hundred thousand dollars. That sound reasonable? Uh, that's consolidated all in, yes. And um, so I guess what I I'm, and I noticed too. Um, I guess we, there's a little bit of a difference, and I compared it to last year. Last year we ended the year with a variance of eight hundred thousand. So um, I noticed we don't have the annual budget amount, though. So I guess what do I do? Subtract the year-to-date budget from the variance, or add them together to figure out where we are? For some reason, those two columns are not here. I, I, Carolyn, I'm really not sure what you're looking at. Sure, I'm looking at the consolidated income statement this year compared to last year. And for some reason, the annual budget and the percentage of the annual budget was removed. So it kind of makes it hard for me to see where we are. What, did we decide to do that for a particular reason, or did you just forget or fell off? On last year, you mean? Because it's this on year's this year. and yeah, this, it's not this year. It's not on this one for June 30th. Well, no. Oh, okay. Oh, that's so it's okay, so it's just an error. Okay, now it's the end of the year. I'm trying to figure out what were our plans for having over $600,000 left in the budget. That's a pretty um, substantial amount of money. Did we have plans for that? Um, our plans are all set forth in the budget. So the okay. budget is the budget and... The budget began July 1st and we have mm -hmm. a surplus of over $600,000. I was wondering what we planned on doing with that. Well, I think that... Um, that will be answered in the uh, strategic planning round that we're just starting. So we will need an additional six hundred thousand. We've already. I guess what I'm trying to say, we've already increased the budget. Well, I don't know. Uh, to uh, to take care of whatever your plans were. So I mean, we had eight hundred thousand sitting here last year. Now this year we have another six hundred thousand. So it's a quite a bit of money that we're just going to. It sounds frivolously spent. I mean, we should have ascertained that. At year end. I mean, that's much more than I would have expected. Well, spending is the, is the budget, and that you guys approve the budget, and but the levy was a separate issue, the, and that was partly to do with the fact that we had to increase the levy at that time, or we did not have the chance to do it again, and we would start running out of money in a few years. So now we have six hundred thousand dollars left in the budget. I'm just looking for a, a responsible answer. What what are what are some of the ideas you have for spending that money? Chairman, I'm confused on your question. We have six hundred thousand dollars left in the budget. But we have a budget this mm -hmm. year. And now we have six hundred thousand dollars in addition to the I budget. I understand. I'm just trying to it doesn't matter how much we have left over. It doesn't? Well, we have a budget. Right. Right? And the budget is how much we're going to spend this year. That's true. And what right. are we going to do with six hundred thousand? Well, if it's left over, it, it's in our surplus. But my point is, it's a lot of money to have in your surplus. Do you well, not agree? Given the size of our budget, I don't know if it's a huge amount. I'm certainly glad, happy to be 600000 in the black instead of 600000 in the red. And have no purpose for spending it. I think well, that's I don't irresponsible. Know that well, well no, I don't okay, know. okay, okay. I, 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 I think it's a of 600000 I'm going to respond. The, the next budget meeting we have, mm -hmm. let's go over there. Right. We should have gone over it well, June 30th. Well, we went over the budget. Mm -hmm. We all went over it. Mm -hmm. We went line by line. And we all agreed to it. Well, that's a budget. We didn't realize we were going to be over six hundred thousand. Because if we're going to be over six hundred thousand, we could have redirected some of the money we're spending in the budget. Yeah, but you don't know how much you're going to be over until the end of the year. No, you know, very, you know, if we have accounting and financial people working for us, you have a very good idea of where you're going to end your year. I'm just saying that's a lot of money to not know what we're going to do with. So um, I guess the answer is we don't know what we're going to do with it. That's fine. I just didn't well, know your answer. Well, I needed one. In the next, in the next, next budget process, when it next looks like year? well, whenever the next budget process occurs, any year, whenever the next budget process occurs, mm -hmm. then as we look at our surplus, then make suggestions as to what we should do with it. Well, six hundred thousand dollars. I think we should decide now. We're going to waste the whole year with six hundred thousand in there. Uh, excuse me, but I don't think these are responsible answers, but that's fine. It's six hundred thousand dollars that we'll just leave in there and spend, I guess is what we're going to do. Well, I mean, over the past, we're going to spend what, what we have in the budget, what we call the grant to. 
Okay, here's what I'm trying to say. It makes a lot of sense because personally I feel that we haven't really cut any spending and now that we have 600,000, which is remarkable, you know, we should realize that it's to our advantage not to spend if we don't need to. But we haven't been spending and that's why there's 600,000 left right. over. Because we have been very watchful. We've increased all of our over spending. Spend. We've increased our spending, but to have 600000 is great. I just want to know what you're going to do with it. It's like a slush fund that kind of looks irresponsible. Karen, it's the board's decision as to what we do with it. It is our decision. Okay. Not Susan's, not Greg's. It is our decision. If you have suggestions as to what we should do with it, bring them up and we'll discuss it. I guess my suggestion is, since we didn't need it and June's already come and gone, we don't need to spend it. Yeah, well, actually, spent we, in the can, budget there's no we can just we leave it in our accounts and uh, you know leave it until we need it or apply it towards next year. Uh, but what would prevent it from being used? I mean, our budget. budget. It's not in the budget. Our budget. Budget. It's it's budget. Budget. spending. Well, this go doesn't this six hundred thousand get added to your current budget? No, no, no. 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 So where is this six hundred thousand? In accounts. It's, 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 it's in our total assets. assets. It's in the fund balance. So it's six hundred dollars in assets, not fund six. Balance. Okay, which is not going to be touched. No, because because uh, the budget ordinance, which is an ordinance, which is a law, basically, says that we can only spend so much. And and if you look at the August thirty first, uh, twenty sixteen financial statements, the second column from the right hand side lists in uh, a very clear detail how much money. Again, which is in total seven million one hundred thirty thousand, and how much money we're going to spend by line item uh, throughout the year. That total. Uh, I have the June thirtieth balance sheet with the fund balance. Would that help put this figure in no, perspective? Because what we're talking because what we're talking about is 2016-2017 year. The budget calls for expenditures of six point four million dollars, leaving. A little under seven hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year, mm -hmm. and that will be added to the surplus. The surplus on the balance sheet can be found on the bottom of the page. Right, I'm looking at it for June. I'm just trying to figure out where, we're, well, how we're going to utilize yeah, I, that money. Well, I think that well, in the strategic planning, there may be things that are big ticket items, so that money may end up being moved into the special reserve fund, which would be, be for. It, that is the only place it can be moved to is the special reserve fund. So that would be for, that is how we did the building renovation was by money that over many 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 years had been moved into special reserve. That's how we did it without borrowing money. So then it's possible we could use this in special special reserves for our strategic plan. If, yeah, if the board chose okay. to put that in the strategic plan and to vote to move it to this special reserve. Okay, it's I think all in your control. And I think as a board, we should have answers to these questions. And you're part of the Thank board. Thank you so much you for explaining that. Okay. I will uh, now entertain a motion to approve payment of bills for operating expenses of $232,934.72, payroll expenses of $256,131.46, Special reserve exempt, uh, expenses of $8,439 for a total monthly expense of $498,505.18. And so moved. Second. Any discussion? Diane, can you take a roll? Rock. Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Candy? Yes. Ten. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the director's report. Do you have a report for us this evening? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, my written report. Um, I would like to get feedback from the board, either now or at another time, uh, if whether the format that I make using for the director's report, report is useful to you. What I've been doing is I have all of my supervisors write me a monthly report, and then I take the things that they have talked about, what's going on in their departments, and I put them under their particular categories with their names. So it mixes the things that I'm saying myself and with there will be something that was from Sasha, from Ariane. Um, and so it, it's become a fairly lengthy report. They also have been taking pictures, which said pictures speaks a thousand words, so I've been including those. But it is, it's getting a little bit longer. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that this is actually doing what you want 
it's information that you want to know. I think it's really, really helpful. I didn't really mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't want to be giving you too much of one kind of information and not enough of another kind. So if you have any more thoughts about it later, that would be, I, I'd be interested to hear. Um, I do just want to remind you that at the back of the director's report, there is always um, the trustee calendar, which goes out six months now. Tim has requested, uh, and I think it's a great idea, so I'm going to follow up on it, a sort of a more timeline of um, not just particular events like the Illinois Library Association, but more a timeline of these are the things the board has to be working on at different times of years. Is that Absolutely. We, yeah. we seem to be surprised sometimes when things that come up on a regular basis come up. So maybe if we have a calendar for the year that shows this is when we're going to start talking about the levy, this is when we're going to start talking about the budget. This is when we're going to rehire people. That, you know, whatever we do that's on a normal basis and has this, uh, these number of months are dedicated to it, then we can be prepared. I think a that's a good idea. Yeah, so yeah, so I'll work on that. I mean, we generally know it, but it, somehow or other I always forget. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I think, yes. and even, not to you know, point Rob out, but for myself, too, as, as, as a newer trustee, I didn't have that sense of what's coming up. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to highlight from the past month? Um, well, I did want to tell you a little bit about the strategic planning, which I did not want really to cover in here because we just had our first meeting with them last week. Um, we have been uploading lots of data for them to work with, for them to put together their um, you know, sort of opening report and when they do the focus groups they have a PowerPoint presentation that they'll do that sort of introduces the library to people. So we've been uploading tons of different kinds of data. Um, and then uh, the timeline for it looks like we will be in late October or early November doing the focus groups. Um, I did check with Dennis O'Donnell, not Dennis O'Donnell, but Dennis Walsh, <laughs> to see um, if we, there was any way that the board's focus group, if the, your focus group is together with me, apparently, under their system, and whether there was any way that could be an executive session because um, they really don't like reporters reporting on things that the board members say in the course of strategic planning because nothing has been decided yet and it's disruptive, but unfortunately it does have to be an open session. So um, the choice then will become, and I'm going to consult with them about what they want to do, is either to do it, um, to just go ahead and have it be an open meeting, or to break it down into like two-person interviews, which would take a lot more of their time. Mm -hmm. yeah. so but and then not get a sense of a big open meeting. If it's right. Right. Just that, so that would be that's the choice that we'll have to make. And I'm in consultation with them. So I would let you know what you say about that. Um, so that's where we are with strategic planning now. But I'm very excited that it's getting underway. Lots of good data. I have a question. Um, on page 22. Um, yes. The report here that uh, Greg and Katie Choi have been uh, calculating uh, people's hours, previous hours, is yes. that because they want to buy back their service or their, their time? Well, for IMRF needs that information in case they do, and plus they, they start do. with 20% of their past time. So they need to have so an is there number for that. said they want to do it? Or is there everybody? Everybody. Oh, okay. oh, they need to do that. Yeah. Can I ask a strategic planning question? Sir, you mentioned the focus groups. Are those the only type of groups that will be created? There are focus groups, There is, which will be targeted groups of people, like wanting to talk to members of the business community, say, might be one of the groups. Um, and then there is a sort of more like a forum where anybody who wants to can come um, to a bigger session. Okay. Um, so that will be a one. And then there also will be the online survey. And um, do you have a schedule for the forms or an idea? Or late, you know, is it late October, early November. Oh, for everything. <clears throat> yes, and then after all of that information is gathered together and they um, have analyzed it and have you know, information about what people have been saying, then we will have a retreat. And I did not want to have the retreat in December, so it is will be pushed to sometime in January. Oh, so that is all well, of you would be included in that and the supervisors as well. Okay, great. And then a few oh, items for that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I want mm -hmm. on that so far. So that'll be, that'll have to be up in the too. Yes. Yep. It was last time, though, and, and nobody came, yeah. so hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see an issue. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm sorry, Karen. 
No, go ahead. Uh, on page 24, you report that Sasha's brother is it? Uh, how do you say his name? Surgeon. Surgeon. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, he resigned his position in, uh, to take on team leader duties. Well, he, 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 actually, he started as a team leader, yeah. and then um, when we developed the digital services department, we asked him if he wanted to be a part of that, and so we would have him. He actually was wearing two hats under one full-time job, but he decided to that he did not want the full-time job anymore, and he wants to focus his attention on the patron services. So we're going to work part-time? Yeah. Well, so you're not creating a new position. Oh, gosh, no. Oh. No, no, he's one of four oh, existing team leaders. He's just to, going back to his Is there just, no? yeah. So he was he was part time or he was full. He was part time, oh, the part time team leader. So then we developed part -time. digital services. Okay, and so he's not going from full time to part time. He is going from full time. He yeah. went. He was part time, full time, back to part time. He's a young guy. He has lots of talents and things okay. that he might want to tackle. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to come. I see something here that brings to mind. I was talking to uh, somebody who works at our school as well as uh, one of the Niles high schools, and she had something she pulled up that she had online that was sent to her from the library with all these books that were recommended. And I guess it's for the person who works with the school board. Mm -hmm. And we had a huge discussion about this. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool because once I told her, oh yeah, I'm going to a board meeting and I told her what board, she starts raving about yeah. the library. And That's I great. thought you guys needed to know how much uh, what you are doing is appreciated. Well, that's really great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I have one question. Uh, yes. We had discussed a, a meeting or two ago about um, offering the opportunity for patrons to get passports here at the library. Yeah. Um, um, but I don't remember if we got more information on that or where we left yes. that at. Yeah, Greg and Cindy and I made a trip to the ELA Public Library, which is actually where Tim and I were this last weekend. So I actually got to see their passport desk kind of more in action this time. Mm -hmm. But the person that set up their program was very generous with her time and documents and showed us in a lot of detail what they do. It's um, it's a big responsibility, and I, I am very interested in moving forward on it, but we need to have the right person to head it up, and we need to have the right locations for it to be, because um, on a weekend, they at Eli can have a two to three hour backup. So you really have to think everything about it through very, very carefully before you jump in. But um, I think it would be a great service to the members of the community, and the Passport Agency is actively recruiting libraries now. Where before, when we asked a couple of years ago, they said, no, no, we don't need you. But now they actually, they've realized that libraries are great to work with because of the longer hours, the customer service point of view, and, you know, being being open on, on Sundays is a key one. I, I think, you know, weekend um, opportunities to get a passport are really important to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've been at the post office right across yeah. the street, and the line for the passport mm -hmm. yeah, is very long. long. And I'm sure they'd be thrilled to tell people yeah, you yeah. can also go, go across, across the yeah. street. Yeah. People would be mm -hmm. delighted yes. to hear that. Well, can the passport agency give us an idea about how many passports are issued in at, at the post office? Or I, I sure expect they could. That we yeah. might be able to get a, a rough yeah. idea about how many. So I've actually gotten as far as filling out the initial paperwork on it, and so the next step, which I have not taken yet, partly you know because I would not take it without consulting you, but I don't quite see the way forward to doing it yet is to say, you know, these are the hours that we're going to have, these are the people that are going to be working on it, here's where it's going to be located. So that's my next step is to really nail down the details and then we would get training from Are them. you anticipating new, new, new hires for this? I think it's I think it's possible. I really do because people are working pretty hard as it is. That's what it, yeah. And and you need to have um, it's something that has to be handled very, very carefully. It can't be done by just, you know, you can't hire a high school kid to do passports. No, no. It's, um, it's really, really careful, meticulous work. And so you, you have to want, have it. it would be, depending on how much we do it, would depend on how many people, right? Yes. Yeah, it would do, you know, the demand. They yeah. say that the busiest time was, was that? January. Spring? Yeah. yeah, spring is the big, busiest time of year. And so we saw that on Saturday and they, they divide it up between you've got your waiting list, you, you sign in initially, and they make sure that you have all of your documents that you could possibly need to have. Everybody's there, everything's filled out properly, then you're in line and they call you back to come to the other side of the desk to get your actual passport done. 
and they were at a half hour wait at 11 in the morning on Saturday. So you said you could go between now and the next board meeting, you could talk to the postmaster across the street and get some yep. numbers sure. and I'm sure they're on for a year. Yeah, I could so find out. You can get an idea of how yeah. many. Well, Ela right now, they, um, I think she said they were getting ready to do over 100,000 this year. Yeah. So that could be really a very significant <laughs> yeah. amount of Wasn't it? Wasn't no, it what it was? Um, yeah, I think it was the the dollars. The dollars, hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So, wow. this is a a potential money earning. It's a it's twenty five dollars a passport. That just library. That's not a bad gig. No, any gig that brings money is a good gig. I just have one question: Are we concerned about confidentiality of all this information? I mean, oh, would have this to be. other place have like a, a whole setup? They they do have everything, all kinds of locked. Spaces sure. and yeah. drawers, and yes, you have to be so very careful about that. Oh, so then it's yeah. all be done way ahead of time, so you know it's all. Yeah, we have to have it all thought through carefully. Mm -hmm. So you know, with the strategic planning coming on right now, I kind of hesitated to leap right into another thing at the same time as doing the strategic planning, but I am still very interested in doing it. Yeah, so that's a, it's a good time possibly to figure out where you are campaigning and what you need to do for it to be successful. Yeah. That's a and yeah. how much space is needed yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So definitely, it very much on our radar. We are investigating it. Um, so and the board, it sounds like you're very positive on it. So no, I think it's so. a great thing. All right. Okay. Um, so you have communications. To say on page 26, good job, Dave, with the dry erase boards. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. The day before I rented it, you put them in, and I thought, wow, what a wonderful thing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I also just quickly wanted to run through the statistics because I don't think I do that very often and I just thought you might not know what all these numbers are. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I, there are a couple particular things. So page 28, um, uh, one thing I wanted to remind you of is that we started a few months ago with automatic renewals of materials so that a person material gets renewed automatically so those statistics are reflected here so as lovely as it is to see that our numbers going up 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 uh, we're going to hit a one-year point here when all of a sudden it's going to go flat 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 so i just kind of want you to be mentally prepared that it's not that oh no we're doing so much less it's that it will stop increasing at the rate that it is right now because of the renewals the second thing is um that there is a particular um online service called Tumble Books that is basically picture book ebooks um, that we've had here for many years. It was free for a number of years and then it became almost no money and then they uh, and they allowed us to give it to our schools for free and that was fabulous and so we get great numbers on it and so now after building this up for like 10 years now of course they want us to pay money for it mm -hmm. and so um, so anyway, you will see that our digital account, uh, digital numbers are down a little bit this month, and that's why is that we lost all the numbers that we were getting from the schools when they were using tumble books in the schools. I am inclined to go ahead and um, and buy it for the schools. Um, so Ariane is working with finding, making, just making sure that each one of the schools actually wants it and use it before we pay for it for them. But anyway, that the those schools numbers, buy it themselves. So I mean, I think they could, but they wouldn't have budgeted for it either. And I have this capital, capital money that. So, yeah, it, it's, um, you know, it goes toward our statistics, and it is a really nice service. It's 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 ebooks basically. It's buying ebooks in another form, just electronically. Um, so, I, you know, I have not, I don't know for sure that we're going to do it, but I did want you to be aware that that's why that number is down. It's not that people have suddenly stopped reading ebooks. It's that we're losing a 1,000 or so, so uh, from the schools. Is there a cost already associated with that for the schools, or does it depend on how many? Students they yeah, my, I don't know how they were figuring it. it. They just gave us a flat figure for nine schools, and I just want to be sure that all nine of the schools really want it before we accept what was the figure. Yeah, I don't remember. It was around 4,000. I have one question. I'm looking at new district card registrations, 437 yes. for the month Yes. of August. Yeah, 400 Correct. new cards. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, Sasha has proven doing a great, great job. It should be big, bigger than that this month. Yeah, uh, yeah. good promotions for library cards. Not every good. Let's see. Um, so, oh, my communications are we there yet? Not quite. I just wanted to say that uh, the DVDs. I think that is a figure where you will, you should expect to see that slide 
um, that because of streaming, that just it, our people are still using DVDs very heavily, but that number is just that's going to go down, and particularly the juvenile because um, parents really like the streaming services when they have little kids and not having to mess with equipment. And um, I don't know about that because my daughter plays them in the car. Uh -huh. of the kids. And she, yeah. My yeah. Well, I'm sure the Delta will still have them for a long time, but um, but yeah, that number is just inevitably going to be going down. And then um, I just wanted to explain the in-house use in case you didn't know what that number is. In-house use is the things that people have read uh, or picked up or looked at in the library that just gets um, reshelved. And that that is the fuzziest of numbers. It's really not a real number at all because you know, from being out of the picture book area, if you, you pick up a board book, you read it, you put it back, or, or you know, or and the opposite also occurs where a child will come and pull down a bunch of books. So mm -hmm. it's it's a it's an estimate at absolute best. So I just wanted to point out a couple things about the statistics since I give them to you every month, but I don't talk about them very much. So communications. Um, I don't think I did have anything in particular to highlight. Um, just some very very nice ones. All right, uh, commi committee reports. Uh, Barbara, what are you yeah, We finally got the, um, the estimates from both uh, the Porche uh, group and from uh, the code group. So now the building uh, announced committee can need to look over them and uh, make a suggestion. Okay. Uh, were, you, were you thinking of doing it on a certain day? Or? Um, we can talk about when you're available. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, we should do that soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a talk later, but okay. Yeah. We don't have any uh, technology in the report. Um, going on to liaison reports. Uh, friends of the library, Carolyn. Um, yes, we had a meeting on September 12th, and um, friends um, is going to contribute uh, $500 to the honor flight. Um, they were also asked to contribute to coming together in Skokie this year. Um, the focus is China, and it is to um, pay for a speaker. I believe the name is Wei Ling, if I'm pronouncing that right. And um, the um, library is contributing towards the cost of um, having him come to the United States, and friends agreed to match it. And then also, let's see, um, we talked um, about the, um, the time involved for um, processing the donated books. Um, Chris Hanusiak expressed interest in wanting to assist the library. Um, I believe that was because the library is going to let him know what the process is. So at some point, I guess we'll have another discussion about that and um, figure out how friends can um, can be part of the um, process. You know, the Liberty Library, it's friends volunteers completely that run the friends shop. The well, librarians don't, the don't spend their time doing that. Well, so it's it's actually, does, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that the library has to use our staff to process all the donations and collect the money and then the friends tell us how to use that money. I don't know what well, well, back to the friends telling you how to use the money, it's, they don't tell you how to use it. They just ask for but procedures. They, so they control the money. Right, right, okay. But I think they're pretty, I mean, they're willing to give it to you as long as just give them whatever, answer their questions is all I can say. But I thought when I first came on board that it was the friends running this. Somehow did it change? Or has it always been the library? It was Cindy, Cindy is the one that knows the most about this because she manages the volunteers and mm -hmm. she's worked on the front staff for a long time. Um, so it was all staff until just before the renovation and then volunteers started helping. So oh, so it's prior never... Prior to that, it was always uh, staff. Okay, well then that's a good point. We know it's like half and half or Could we like get that. some of that information? I mean, it's friends need to know how friends and other libraries are functioning. I mean, and now that I think of it, a lot of those members, they're home all day long. So um, they may have some free time. So it's not its not an outrageous request. But I didn't know that. That's great to know. You said it's <coughs> Glenbrook, right? Glenview. Glenview, okay. Maybe I'll just call them and get some information. Thank you. Okay, 
Let me ask, you said that friends are going to contribute $500 to an honor flight. Is that uh, so that uh, veteran can travel yes. to Washington? Um, yes. Um, I believe um, Mr. O'Shea um, is in charge of our veterans here. And that's, um, I think he does, isn't it something he does every year? Yes, the veterans history breakfast. He does the veterans oral project that he's been collecting the histories. Um, um, but the, the friends started contributing to the honor flight. Well, it seems like you do. It's, it's a worthwhile charity, but I'm not really sure what it has to do with the library and how it benefits the library. I think it probably was in conjunction with the fact that we have such a veteran base here with um, with, with the breakfast or whatever. But this would like help one person fly to Washington <clears throat> D.C., right? And probably someone who comes to the library. I mean, do, are you well, I think it just is a general donation to them. I don't know how much it costs per bed. I think it just goes into a pool of money. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a direct link to the library. Chairman, is their account ever audited? Whose account? The friend's account. At every meeting, you're aware, they're aware of the expenses. But it's it's actually it's handled, who handles um, Rich is the treasurer? Yeah, Rich is the like treasurer. At the end of the year, audited. Audit, there's a report. I'm sure Richard um, can give you whatever information you want. He works right in the library. Though he does not do that job, at, that's separate. He is, he is a member of the community and he is a friend of the library. He's not doing that as a, as a member of the library staff. So if you have any questions, you can, he would be better, the best person to ask. Do they do a budget? Do they have a budget process? They review their expenses, yes. That's why we had an issue with that one purchase, because they just wanted backup, because that's their process. Yeah, there's big place for paperwork. Okay, uh, legislative, do we have a report? Nothing except the motion that's coming up later. Okay, what about uh, rails, anything there? Rails has been, um, developing standards for all libraries and they are uh, they've just issued a revision of the standards for libraries where you can um, it, it, it says it gives you guidelines for what the expectations would be for a particular kind of library so you, can, you know try to be a proficient library or I forget what the top level is but um, that they will be finalizing those very soon it's been a very long process that they've been working on okay all right Secretary's report. Um, Barbara, uh, are you going to be reading something into the record for us? Yes. Um, Thank um, you. First of all, a certified copy of the report of receipts and expenditures from the Niles Public Library District for the six months ending June 30, 2016, was filed with the Cook County Clerk on September 7, 2016. Also, a certified copy of the report of the statement of operations for the Niles Public Library District the 12 months ending June 16th, June 30th, 2016, will be filed with the Cook County Clerk upon receipt of the Certificate of Publication. The Statement of Operations was published in the Niles Herald Spectator on September 15th, 2016. Okay. All right, is that it then? Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, then moving on to new business, I see we have a suggested policy change here regarding the alcoholic liquor policy. We have a motion to um, approve this new policy, 3.31 uh, alcoholic liquor policy, just to get this on the table so we can discuss it. Uh, so move, please. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All right. Um, Susan, can you give us a little background information on this sure. proposed new policy? Um, under the Illinois Liquor Control Act of 1984, um, any government, any state-run institution, and li district libraries fall under the state rather than under a municipality. So state-run institutions were not allowed to serve liquor. And uh, over the years, park districts, universities, almost all of the things connected to the state have been exempted from that. Library districts were kind of the last uh, to be left where they are not allowed to serve alcohol. So they just recently changed the law, so that is why Dennis uh, Walsh and Clyde Parker Jenkins have written a new policy for us. Um, the, with the loss, the, all of the parts of the law are incorporated into this policy. The main elements of it are that 
Um, it can only be at a special event. You have to have a policy in place to serve alcohol. So this would be, we cannot serve alcohol if you guys don't pass this policy. We would have to come to you for every, each individual occasion when we wanted to serve alcohol. We would have to have permission from the village if the village requires permission. And we would have to have the correct kind of insurance. So all of these are covered in this policy. I, as I said in the note, do not anticipate that this is anything that we would be doing very often. I would see this as probably uh, only for the most special occasions or if there was possibly a program that was directly related to this. So it would always remain in the board's hand to say yes or no on any particular proposal to serve alcohol. This is just to make it pos possible. And what would the policy, what would the wording of the policy be? What is well, we hear it right here. Page 36. Okay, and then my client wrote it. My other question is, um, do we have do we have to worry about minors being in the library? That's, that's, no, it's, it just is that they can't be in, around it. It's no alcoholic liquor may be sold, distributed, or in the position of any person under the age of 21 at any time on library district property. And it cannot be sold, distributed, or consumed in any area of the library district property accessible to the general public during an event. So it would have to be like in the large meeting room with the door closed or something. Okay, so it would not be in the library. It wouldn't be just be like people walking around the library during open hours with alcohol. Or it could be in the evening after hours. Correct. Well, I think that would be the most likely time that it would take place. Yeah. Do you know we have to get a local, local liquor license? I don't know. Okay. Probably. I, I think you do because I know we have to have one at yeah. the church. I would guess. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I think we have to get permission from the village. Um, There's a fee involved, I believe. Yeah, there might be a fee involved. And it might not be available. I think the village has a limited number of liquor licenses that are available. Well, I don't know if it's a license exactly or just permission. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly. I would have to look into that. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. Sure, that's yeah, it's a It's a, a, a permit, I think it would be. Oh, okay. Which is slightly different since it's a limited basis. Yeah. It would be like for a short time. Do I have any other co uh, comments or questions about this proposed policy? I think it's one. Thank you for your comments. All right. Uh, and could you please uh, take a little word? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Patty? Yes. Yes. Okay, passes. Moving to the next agenda item. Uh, do I have a here a motion to approve payment to this graphic for the printing of the fall issue of Chapter 1 in the amount of $5,891.36? Your second. Second. All right. Any discussion? And Diane, would you take the roll? Val. Yes. Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Danny. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there is there any other new business? I have a question. Okay. Um, it's new business. I was looking for the copy of the ordinance 16-05 budget and appropriations which was filed in July I didn't see it on the website do you know where I could get a copy of it we could get it on the website tomorrow but you got I mean, you had it I looked through my um, packet from last month because I thought that's when we talked about it and I didn't see it it was a couple of weeks ago wasn't it, no, it wasn't in August June June too. When it was passed, I thought yeah, we passed it in June. Yes, sir. That was passed. It was filed July seventh. Is in our notes last month. It was filed right. July seventh, which meant it was passed yes. in June. Okay, and it will be up on the website. But yes, I could just print it tomorrow. Sure. Okay, great. I couldn't find it. All right, and I just wanted to know where it would be on the website. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, uh, in terms of uh, new business, oh, I'm yes. sorry. I get one more. I yes. 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 Um, before you go on to the next thing. Um, on Saturday morning, I happened to be in the Fox Lake Library, and uh, I stumbled onto the uh, YNL Trains uh, Model Railroad Club. He had a big setup there, and uh, it was wonderful to see that. It, I mean, for people who can't go down to the Museum of Science and Industry and see the fabulous setup there, this was really, really something to see. So I got the, um, I got a, uh, uh, Footnotes, which is their chapter one, 
and with their admin, and, and I got the contact information, so you might want to consider that for, sure. the, for the library. Thank you. And um, the, the fellow also told me that they're permanently set up in the home library. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Also here I have an article from the uh, Wall Street Journal, Do Readers Live Longer? So I thought I'd guess they were going to discuss it. Okay, I don't know if this comes under new uh, business or unfinished business, but I see on our calendar that the um, Rosemont uh, Illinois Library Association conference is coming up and next month, and that actually it will be one. Of our meeting is one of the days of that um, those three days. Uh, I don't know. Have we gotten any particular information from them? Was it your last board packet? Okay. Uh, the trustee day is the. Thursday, so the day after the board meeting, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of um, well, good attending sessions. Uh, we've missed the early bird deadline for, for signing up, but we still could sign any event that we'd like to attend. So that would be Thursday, October 1st, 2020. Okay. So, yeah, let me know. Okay, all right. Um, anything else from anyone? Um, a representative of the Village of Niles asked me to pass this around, but essentially uh, the Village is asking a number of organizations, uh, the library, the uh, Park District, um, well, I remember what the other ones are, there were a number of them, uh, <coughs> uh, for volunteers for the Holly Jolly Christmas Market and Tree Lighting Ceremony. That will be held on Saturday, November 26th between 3 and 9 p.m. at Oasis. So if anybody's interested in volunteering, it doesn't have to be just board members, it could be others who are attending this meeting as well, and anybody else, uh, please contact your name at the bottom of this. What, what are they looking for people to do? Um, uh, there's uh, crowd control, there's, oh, well, the, the library already, uh, do they have a, a? We have people on that, although. Thing there, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to uh, give Kathy a call and find out what they're looking for, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I did it last year. You know, okay. kids are there and they like that. It looks like the second page. Okay. Oh, is it on the second page? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And, oh, they have the training space Anyway, uh, if you're all interested, uh, please give her a call. This is something I might be able to get kids to volunteer for. So I'll get to talk to them yeah, at the meeting be tomorrow. And okay. hopefully we'll get volunteers. Okay, great. Um, Thank I you don't, very much. We don't appear to have any executive session necessary this month. So therefore, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I just had one question. I'm sorry. You talked about the appropriations and it was, I think you mentioned that we had received it in June. Didn't we change it though regarding IMRF? Then we increase the appropriations amount to two million dollars. You had the tentative ordinance mm -hmm. and the tentative budget appropriation the month before, so in May, and then June you passed the final. Well, that's really, and that's their no. channel. That's really so important. we increase the appropriations for IMRF. Yeah. At the June meeting. So it was in June. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Thanks. I just wanted to make sure when that was done. Okay. Um, now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. There's a second? I'll second you. Okay. All right, Diane, take please take the roll. Rob? Yes. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. 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 Okay. All right, thank you very much. See you uh, next time.